Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you the gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Every single day, y'all. We have a good one today, y'all. I said we got to go in today, y'all. We are talking about some recruiting updates, doing some recruiting updates. Um, a lot of things going on recruiting with the South Carolina Gamecocks today. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. First of all, first of all, I got to dress like right now. I am in a hotel room. My wife and I are turning up for her birthday. I'm in a hotel room. We hanging out in Vegas. Um, I wanted to open up the the, the blind. What's the thing called? Whatever things it's called, blind shears, whatever it is, but it's too bright outside. So, because it is four o'clock here, four o'clock here, seven o'clock back into the crib. But we are about to turn up, and in, in honor of everything that's going down, in honor of in honor of life, in honor of 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 being a gamecock, in honor of of being hated by everybody else across the land, everybody else across the land, we are doing a shot of Tito's right now, right now. And right now, so turn up, fam. It's shot o'clock wherever we go. Shot o'clock wherever I am. Shot o'clock wherever I am, and whenever I'm doing the show, it is shot o'clock. So I want to say, so far, I have not gotten my wife drunk yet. It has not occurred yet, but it is still, um, it's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. It, we going down. We went on. It, it, we're in Vegas, so it's gonna be some drinking going down. It's gonna be some gambling going down. It's gonna be some some it's probably some bad decisions made by your boy Captain Will going down. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Let's start some recruiting. Let's start some recruiting. So so everybody already know. Everybody already know. The Sarah Strong decided to um, announce her top three. She announced her top three, and when she announced her top three her three schools were yukon duke and north carolina those are top three i and I'm, when i found out about it when i heard about it when i got the tweet about it when i got the tweet, i was like okay I, I i i understand i understand now i'm not gonna say i wasn't surprised because i was surprised i was su surprised because i thought I thought that Sarah Strong was going to say South Carolina. I did. I really thought that South, she was going to say South Carolina. And I thought that it was going to be uh, another notch in the belt for, for Don Staley. She was making a, a, a huge push, huge push for the Gamecocks. I mean, a huge push for Sarah Strong. And I thought that she was going to say South Carolina at the McDonald's All-American game. Not going to lie. Not going to lie whatsoever. And then when I saw the list, I said, uh, no, uh, UConn's like, okay. I've been hearing a lot about UConn for several months now. I was like, okay, I understand UConn. Um, Duke, Duke, you no know, Kara Lawson, and everything. They got a, they got a really nice recruiting class. Um, and 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 then North Carolina. So I could see the the, the tug. I could see the 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 want to of of, of wanting to play for uh, uh, your home state, make them proud. Things like that. And if, if she chooses, let's say, let's go through a couple scenarios. She chooses, she chooses North Carolina. North Carolina got Blanca Thomas coming in, who's a baller, six foot five center. She's a baller. Um, Duke got multiple players that's coming in. Um, you, you, and I, I've seen Ariana Robertson play up close in the number elite. She's a baller. She's elite. She's about six four. Um, long arms can jump out the gym. And then you got UConn. UConn gonna have Paige Beckers, uh, Asia Fudd, Leah Edwards. Man, you know, all these injuries they have. But if she chooses UConn, if she chooses UConn, I'm thinking this out as, I, as it, it, it rolls in my mind. If she chooses UConn, UConn with the injuries they have right now and the talent they got returning, UConn against South Carolina is going to be lit. It's going to be lit. It, I, it, it's going to be something else. Um, but we're not, we not getting Sarah Strong. 
I, that I mean, we can say I'm strong. I, I'm not gonna sit here and cry about it. I ain't gonna do any of those things like that because we still, you know, we still got Joyce Edwards, who's right now number two by ESPN, who I believe I've said it over and over, over and over and over again that I believe that Joyce Edwards is the number one basketball player in the country. I've said that since I saw her last August that she is the number one player in the country. And I saw that and I made that assessment once I saw both of those players going head up at the Under Army Elite. That's how I feel. I see Joyce Edwards winning all these various different national awards. And I think that the 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 the, the, the notion that uh, there is a gap, according to ESPN, between Joyce Edwards and, and Sarah Strong is not true. It's not true. It's not true. And I think that she's gonna be. It's gonna be flip flop, and it's gonna say Joyce Edwards, the number one player in the country, and Sarah Strong, number two player in the country. Both of them are great players. Both of them are great players, and no shame whatsoever. Because I would have loved to have Sarah Strong in this basketball team. Love. It would have been awesome. It would have been awesome if that would have happened. But we are fine. Ladies and gentlemen, we fine. Don't, 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 don't get misconstrued. We, oh, we had all our eggs in the Sarah Strong bucket. Oh, hell no. Nah. We ain't, we ain't. That ain't happen. That, that ain't happen. This ain't no doom and gloom type uh, Saturday evening that we rocking on before we used to have a selection day tomorrow. You know, ain't, ain't no, none of those things like that at all. No, no, those things like that at all. Cause we, cause we are. This, 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 this class is number two in the country. Number two in the country. Now, you know, and you with Sarah, and then you got Maddie, and you got Adele. You know, Maddie, twelfth ranking in, in the class, and and Adele Tack, twelfth, twenty sixth ranking in the class, and both of both of them are injured. Both of them are injured right now. Don't 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 go don't, don't get misconstrued. Both of them are injured right now. Maddie tore uh, her meniscus. Uh, uh, and 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 Sarah. I mean, excuse me, and on Adele. You know, is is nursing her injury, and you see her getting better and better every time you see her, see the Gamecocks out on the court, moving better and better. The Gamecocks will be elite, elite, elite. I said before Sarah Strong made her announcement, I said that the Gamecocks will be better next year than we are this year. I said that. I said that. And the reason I said that because of the talent we got coming back next year, who's going to get better. I said that because of the recruiting class that we are uh, 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 a guy coming in. We got three five star recruits, three five, uh, McDonald's All Americans. Adele Tack not a McDonald's All American. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, Adele Tack is a McDonald's All American. She's a McDonald's All American. That's that's just semantic. She just decided to show up and and and, and arrive at South Carolina in January and 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 get a couple of rings. You know, graduate early. So stop. She she would have been a McDonald's All American. McDonald's All American, you know. The talent is here. We have abundance of talent. So possibly that's the reason Sarah Strong decided to go to another squad because we are so talented. And it would be an easier path to play than coming to the University of South Carolina. And we have recruits who do that. I think that's the reason that Justice Lee is not here. I think that's the reason that Kenny, I think that's the reason Justice Lee is not here and she went to Texas. I think that's the reason that Kennedy Smith is not here and she went to Southern Cal. Some recruits decide for their reasons to go to other schools. And that is fine. That is fine. It is their decision. It is their life. And we're not going to get every single recruit. I get it. I get it. But, but, make no mistake. Make no mistake about it. The Gamecocks were not in the top three, but a name that you did not hear, a name that you did not see, was was a uh, uh, LSU? I don't know what the hell LSU did in this recruiting cycle. I have no idea what LSU Tigers have done in this recruiting cycle. I have no idea. They got one top 100 recruit in this class. One, 19 and, and, and ranked 97. Louisiana Player of the Year. She's a point guard. One. No more. One. After coming off. A, a a a a championship of coming off a championship in in the next recruiting cycle don't get any any top level recruits zero and i know that they were you know they had all their their eggs in the basket with sarah strong i know they did i seen their you know their their recruit guru 
they recruiting guru, making all these different tweets, making all these different different things, you know. Bro, I don't know what's going on at LSU. I, 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 if you an LSU fan, hit a brother up because I don't know what y'all doing in recruiting. I don't know. I have no idea. But y'all struck out on all of them. All of them. I remember the visit the LSU did had Sarah Strong and Koval. Same time. Struck out on both of them. Both of them. Joyce Edwards. Picking Joyce up. Joyce Edwards up in a, in a, a white Mercedes. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. You can talk about the transfer portal. You can talk about championships. You can talk about all those different things. You can talk about NIL. Apparently, the kids know that they could get that NIL pie anywhere. Our own, our own homegrown Malaysia Full Wiley, Malaysia Full Wiley, not only got one endorsement, but two endorsements over the past few days. Now, this was after the game. After that, the, 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 you know, that the, 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 the LSU debacle that went down last week after that and that, that video or whatever, and talking about, uh, you know, Angel Reese saying, telling Malaysia for a while, you know, they, they're going back and forth. And, and Angel said, you know, get your bag up. And, and Malaysia said, get your grades up, you know, going back and forth about that stuff. And then a couple of days later, she got that, you know, got that endorsement with uh, Mr. Mr. Seafood in Columbia. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Got a whole sauce. Lay with the sauce. I mean, come on. Can you imagine? I can't imagine. I cannot imagine having a sauce named after me 18, 19 years old. That's crazy. I can't imagine that. That's sick. And a couple of days later, wake up and they see, oh, 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 Steph Curry got in his bag and signed Malaysia Full Wallet to a four-year NIL deal. Well, no. Like, NIL will go anywhere to any player at any school. It's not like uh, reserved for certain players at certain schools. Nah, boss. Nah, that ain't the way it goes. That is not the way it goes at all. The way it works is if you a baller, and, all, and you hear from my lady, y'all, I mean, country's hell. She just like the hoop. That, she just like the hoop. She a baller. She just like the hoop. And she who because you, she who because me, she who because your know, your mama, she who because your your your, your auntie, she who because anybody. That's what she do. That's my lady. She just want to hoop, and along the way of hooping, she's gonna get her bag, and she's representing Under Armour, and it couldn't happen to a better person and player on our team. I mean, you just to keep it real, just keep it real. So I'm not concerned about recruiting whatsoever. I am not concerned about recruiting. Recruiting is, is, is top dog up in South Carolina. The other teams got to catch up. And UConn, UConn is recruiting well. They get, they get, um, they got that, what's uh, that little point guard? Her name escapes me, but she's a top level, uh, I think a top 10 recruit, uh, second, second rated point guard in the, in the draft, in the draft, in the draft. Second rated point guard in the 2024 class I saw her last summer. And on Armour Elite, she's she's very good. She played at you know team team USA. Just just a good player. You kind of gonna always recruit well. They ain't gonna always recruit well, and it, 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 they having a tough time this year. Having a tough time, and, and ESPN made that notion saying that you know you kind of got the highest percent, the highest percentage. I think thirty six percent chance to uh, of beating the Gamecocks in the championship. They will figure out a way to include UConn in every conversation. I get it. I get it. You want to keep it relative, but UConn ain't got no chance of beating the South Carolina. I, I shouldn't say I don't have no chance of being. So I, that's the wrong term. I, I apologize. That's the wrong term. That's the wrong term. What I meant to say was they got a small, 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 small chance. It ain't no thirty-six percent. Ain't no thirty-six percent. Nothing to keep it real. It ain't no thirty. No, come on, now. come on. They ain't, you know, we we we'll run UConn silly. It ain't happening. But. You know, regardless of where Sarah Strong goes, I wish her well. I mean, Sarah Strong seems to be a good person, baller, sweet family, all those good things, and I wish her well. So but we will be fine. We will be fine. And the Gamecocks will continue to do business as we do, as we do. And those are the things that we will have to, you know, just monitor, you know. It's, it's a couple of things that, that, that we, we really need to take notice of 
couple things we gotta take notice of is this whole transfer portal. That's a couple couple things you gotta notice because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh players entering the transfer portal. It's a lot. There's a lot of players into the transfer portal. You know, you got Katie Rapoo who entered the transfer portal from LSU. She hasn't balled in a minute, you know, all that all that stuff with LSU. She's a good basketball player. You got you know, a couple players, you know, what's going on with Kentucky? Kentucky got their own things going on. As soon as the season ended, they fired their head coach. You know, it's just a lot of things. And then once you fire the head coach, you you see all you always see, you always see a whole lot of players transferring out. You do. And a couple of those players I like. I like this center. And I, I made it, I made a Twitter post and about that center and everything. I got a lot of beef about that. I like, yeah, we don't need one. We don't need one. We don't need one. We don't and all I was saying, this is what I was saying. This is what I was saying. I was saying that Adele Tack is nursing that injury. We don't quite know when Adele is going to come back. I was saying that maybe we need a veteran center to come along while Adele Tack is, you know, uh, until she's ready to trust that knee and kneecap. That's what I was saying. Am I saying that I want to reach out and get to, uh, players from Kentucky? I am not saying that per se. I am saying that there might be a need for a veteran center on this basketball team. Can we agree with that? Can we say that? Can we say that out loud? There might be a need for a veteran center on this basketball team to get minutes, to get minutes. Just in case Adele Tack is not ready to play. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I don't want to put all the eggs in the in Adele Tack's ba uh, basket this season. And then we come into the season and then we're not, uh, <clears throat> we don't have the size that Carolina normally does. That's what I'm saying. Now, I feel, I feel quite great in having a center concept of, uh, of of uh, combination of Sonia Fagan and 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 and, and, and um, Watkins and and Adele Tag and you know it's very different combinations. Scheme of Walker might come back. Who knows? Who knows? What I do know. This is what I do know. Just keep an eye on a, on a transfer portal. Just keep an eye on the transfer portal. We struck out on a small forward this year in the uh, in this recruiting cycle. We struck out. We struck out on, on you know. And when I say struck out, we could have easily got a, a talented, you know, small forward to come to this basketball team. We could have got, we, we could have, come on, this is just South Carolina. What we did not do is get a top level small forward three type player in this recruiting cycle. That's what did not happen. I wanted just to sleep. That's who I wanted. I wanted. Kennedy Smith. That is who I wanted. So, in lieu of both of those players going other places, I still feel the need to get a small forward in the transfer portal. We have Breezy Hall, who's going into her senior year. Okay? That's something to think about, going into her senior year. You got Fagan going to his senior year. You got, you know, Chloe, even though it seemed like she'd been in South Carolina two days, by 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 the media guy is gonna say she in her junior year when the season starts next season, you know we I think that we need a uh, a, a small forward a three type or a, a big guard for South Carolina since we not get one in the tra in the uh, recruiting cycle. Just keep an eye on that. Let's go through a few comments. Brain drain. Bro, I want to thank you for your tip. Appreciate it. Thank you for being a member. And for all the members, all the members, all the members, you know, um, I'm out the net for a couple more days, and, 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 you know, with this trip with my wife and everything. But um, we're going to be doing, once I get back onto the, to that side of the map, we'll be doing a um, members only type vibe for us. And, and again, if you are a gold member, hit me up, email me at capscorner at yahoo.com. And I will make sure that you get your shirt. And if you are interested in buying a shirt, um, email me as well. Email me at capscorner at yahoo.com. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, you know, iHeartRadio, uh, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, especially on YouTube. 
especially on YouTube. You know, I really do appreciate the love. I appreciate everything that's going on with this process. And I thank you, brother. Uh, Adrian Long, two thumbs up to South Carolina, but all the talent on the bench on that bench. That's crazy. I'm pretty sure a few of them is going to leave sooner or later. They're going to be tired of sitting on the bench. Adrian Long, thank you for the comment. I thank you for the comment because it, it, it's something to watch. It is definitely something to watch. Now, we were blessed last season because you had Sanaya Fagan, you had, you know, Breezy Hall, both players who trusted the process and and, and is paying dividends this season. Paying dividends this season. Um, in terms of the the, the, the 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 roster we have right now, who I would anticipate, you know, um leaving. Um we I, I'm not I, I would say this right here. I would say this right here. And I would not be surprised if a player or two leaves South Carolina. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I would not be surprised. If I wake up in, in the morning, God would let me wake up in the morning and, 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 and I see on Twitter, like such and such has entered the portal. I would not be surprised. I won't be surprised because there's so much talent. And you continue to accumulate talent, things like that are going to happen. Things are going to happen because you see the pecking order. The pecking order, it ain't, it ain't no different than, than, than any sport. Ain't no different than any sport. You, you accumulate talent, and then when you accumulate talent, the most talented person or the most talented people will rise to the top in any sport, in any business, in any situation. Those are things that happen. Those are things that happen. And then it, the ones who are uh, not as talented will find another job somewhere else. You know, And in this case with South Carolina, would I love for all the players to come back? Of course. I want a deep basketball team again. We got 15 scholarships on this uh, capability on this roster. I want 15 players on this roster. Will we get that? I don't know. I don't know. What I do know is that we got three talented, talented ballers that are coming into this basketball team in the summer. What I also know is of those three talented players, one of those players is already injured and is rehabbing that injury at South Carolina. And another player in Maddie McDaniel, who is a baller, who is nursing an injury as well. And she's going to be out for several months. So in actuality, once I'm thinking about it out loud, I don't think that uh, there, there is a pressing need right now for players to go uh, uh, for a player. I wish, maybe I shouldn't say players. For a player to go to another school because of playing time. I don't think that's the case right now because playing time will open up according to you know the individuals on the squad in South Carolina is has a couple of injury issues which happens to be two players on this elite 2024 recruiting class now those injuries on this 2024 recruiting class could also be a a a a, a situation where it is a, a, a we would just think about it right here what if uh, Dale Tack is not ready to play if she ain't ready to play at to her capability 100% November, December time frame. Red shirt. Red shirt. She ain't ready to play. Red shirt. We don't, don't need to rush her. We don't have another year. If Maddie McDaniel, Maddie McDaniel was not going to be uh, forced to play this year anyway. That was Maddie McDaniel coming in this year is a luxury for South Carolina. That is a luxury. That is another lightning bug coming into the basketball game who is dynamic with the basketball. That would be another sensational player for South Carolina coming off the bench to do work. She's that talented. But not like Maddie was going to come in and, and take somebody's role like that, the, the, especially with Pow Pow coming back. So you, you got a situation with, you know, Raven, Pow, Breezy, you know, and then you got Full Wally and Tessa coming off the bench. Like, let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. Pow, Pow got one more year. She got one more year. Breezy got one more year. I could possibly see a scenario. This is this is the whole thing. Raven would be a red shirt junior in the fall. Red shirt junior in the fall. Raven could technically leave. She could technically leave because you only got to be four years removed from high school. She could technically leave next year. Do I see that happen? I hope not. But what if there's a situation where Raven, Powell, and Breezy Hall all left together? The sisters leave together. They move on to the W and, and, and do work. Then you, then you have that filtration of, 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 of acquired talent where you have a, 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 a full Wally, a Tessa Johnson, uh, a healthy 
athletic, electric Maddie McDaniel. And then whoever we're going to get in the 25 recruiting class, because you know it's going to be a point guard. You know it's going to be somebody sensational in the 2025 recruiting class. And we'll start talking more about that once the season ends. But it's a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different uh, things that will be going down. Russell Moore. Uh, thank you for the comment. We lost Sarah, but we already have Joyce for months. You used to say that Joyce is the one in your opinion. I believe Sarah did not want to sit on the bench. She enjoyed playing time. I've been saying that. Yeah, thank you, brother. I've been saying that Joyce was number one player again since August. Since August. Since August. I've been saying that. I've been saying that. For what I saw, I just think she's a better player. I ain't talking about no game situation like when we played against uh, Camden. Excuse me, we played against, we, like we played. I ain't played nothing. I ain't dribbled the basketball. Matter of fact, uh, Camden beat the snot out of my basketball team. My, my album out of Marlboro County by 100 points. So we ain't played nobody. Um, but when Camden played Grace Christian, um, it, it kind of be like a, a one-on-one type atmosphere. It was, ne- it was, if anybody saw that game, it was never like a one-on-one type situation with Joyce going against Sarah. It was never like that. But at the Under Armour Elite, it was those situations. They were going one-on-one. They were doing drills. They were scrimmaging. They were doing all these different things against each other. And that was nice. And if I, and, and the gap, if, 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 if Joyce is number one and Sarah's number two, I mean, it's minuscule. And then vice versa. If Sarah's number one and Joyce is, is number two, it's minuscule. It's so small. It's so small. And like I said before, it's Joyce and Sarah is 1A and 1B, and then there's everybody else. Then there's, you know, Jelani Cambridge. You know, that that is how I saw it in my eyes. That is the way I saw it over three days, you know. And in terms of Sarah not wanting to sit on the bench, I can't speak on that. I can't say anything in, neg- in, in that regard. I don't know what's in her family's heart. I don't know what's in her heart in terms of where she's going to choose. But if she choose UConn, I'm just keeping it real. If she choose UConn, she's coming off the bench. Sarah Strong ain't starting for UConn next season. With that squad, she ain't starting. So um, she chose North Carolina and, or Duke. She will, but if she chose UConn. Mm-mm, it ain't happen. Um, LB, LB. Sarah wasn't coming to South Carolina. It's too far. UConn is the o- only an hour away from a mom, and North Carolina was where her dad is. She took a visit out of respect for Don. South Carolina is good. She would need a lot of conditioning. Appreciate your comment, fam. Day T, what's up? What's up, sister? We're good either way. Good way. Brain drain. These are the type of players South Carolina needs to win championships. Aj Wilson, Destin Henderson, Leah Boston, at Alicia, uh, Alicia Gray. Uh, brain drain, you're right, and uh, we have those players. We have those players. We have those players. Do we have an Aj Wilson? Hell, nobody got no Aj Wilson. When, when we had Aj Wilson, ain't nobody in the country had Aj Wilson. Ain't nobody. And we're just lucky that because Aj Wilson was born in Massachusetts. If Aj Wilson was born in Arizona. She would have gained him with South Carolina. Let's just keep it real. Just keep it real. We were lucky that uh, that Adrian Wilson was born in South Carolina, Columbia. That's what we was lucky. Thank God that happened. You know, in terms of uh, you know, Henny was nice. Henny's balling overseas. She's balling. Uh, Leo, Leo ball. I mean, come on. We have talented, talented players on this squad, and it's going to continue that lineage of uh, uh, of of. of Outstanding play, and I'm telling you right now, I can't wait to this champ to this uh tournament start. I've been like a doggone cage animal, just can't wait for this thing to start. Can't wait, and I just want to shut everybody the hell up. I'm just landing right now. I just want, I wish I could suit up, probably only get about 30 seconds out of me. Just, just keeping it real, it's only about 30 seconds, probably about 15 seconds now that I've been drinking, but I just, I just keep, I just, I'm just ready and wanting to go. I'm just ready for it to go. This is what we talk about. Six victories and we win the, we win the chip. We win the chip. Terrence Lewis, Don Katoy with Raven, Powell, Malaysia, Chloe, Ash, line up next year or swap brief. It's so many options. Thank you, brother. So many options for this basketball team of what we can do next season. So many options because Raven's going to get better. You see the growth that Raven made from last year to this year? Exponentially. You see the growth that Chloe made from last year to this year? Exponentially. Swatkins. Off the charts. What would be the growth of another year when they take another step? What would be the growth of a Malaysia full while it was a full offseason with um, Body by Molly, with Tessa Johnson? What, what, what's going to be the growth? Tanaya Job when she comes back? I mean, 
Come on, y'all. Come on. It, 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 it. We playing checkers. Carolina playing checkers. Carolina are thinking two years ahead, y'all. Carolina's taking two years, thinking two years ahead while everybody else is trying to catch up right now. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. They ain't not. Don't. I don't know what the term of a dynasty means. I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. And by this year, by these standards in the 2020s, I don't know what that standard means with dynasty. I don't know what it means. What I do know is whatever the hell a dynasty is, South Carolina's in it right now. Does a dynasty mean that you're winning chips every year? No. No. A dynasty does not mean that you are winning championships every year because there are 360 basketball teams. And unlike past years, there were 360 basketball teams, but they were not. 360 teams that had an opportunity to win a championship. We know that the top three level, three or four teams were always in it to win a chip. We know that back in the day. It was always UConn. It's always Tennessee. Always. But now, now, ladies and gentlemen, you throw Springer and Notre Dame in there too, back in the day. Now, you had a situation where so many teams are so talented because all the you have so much you know growth with women's basketball, girls basketball, and, and and you just see so much growth. So now you're like, hold up. There's nothing wrong with being a different a different champion every single year. There's nothing wrong with that. That just shows the growth of women's basketball. Shows the growth of women's basketball. Here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact. I'm gonna talk about this right here. Here's a fun fact. I'm in Vegas right now. I'm in Vegas as we speak right now. Oh, March the 16th, 2024. You got the, the, the men's various different conference championships is going on right now. Right now. You know what people are talking about? You know what people are talking about? They're talking about the women's championship. They're talking about the women's championship. Am I saying that the women's basketball, NCAA women's basketball championship has surpassed the men? I ain't saying that whatsoever. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is when you have players sticking around for three Four years, five years, you know the players. You have you are invested in those players. And you can market those players. We're seeing all the time with Caitlin Clark right now. We're seeing with Angel Reese right now. You're gonna see it with Malaysia Full Wild as, as things transpire. They are molding Malaysia Full Wild. And I you know ESPN, I, I don't agree with everything they do. I'm just keep it real. I don't agree with everything they do. And they pick and choose who they want to market. And they market the hell out of them. So right now it's Caitlin Clark and, and Angel Reese. They are, they will pick, they are like molding Malaysia for a while to be that next one who they're going to talk about all the damn time. Juju Watkins, they're going to talk about all the damn time. They are doing that. Hannah Hidalgo, they are doing that. They are doing that. And the cool thing about it, Juju's from South Carolina. Juju's from South Carolina. Malaysia from South Carolina. Juju's out there in LA. Hannah Hidalgo out there in Notre Dame. So it's a different, you know, markets, different markets. So everybody's going to eat. Everybody's going to eat. It's special. It's great to see the growth of, of women's basketball and where this thing is going. Because the men, the t most talented men's basketball players in college right now are going to, to the league. Those are the facts. Those are the facts. So you got to reamp, rehype, and start all over talking about a kid who's only going to be on campus about six months. While you got the ladies going to be on campus four years strong. And you learn everything about them. Everything about them. It is so amazing to see. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, Bando, I think Sarah's going to UConn because she has a lot of friends on the team and she's friends with the other current UConn commits and she she be on the lives. <laughs> hey, Bando, before I, I change my uh, mind about, um, you know, Sarah Strong going to be a Gamecock, I, I fully stated that. She was going to UConn. I fully stated she was going to UConn. Then I started hearing some stuff. Then I got a couple of inside type deals. And I thought, oh, hold on now. I think Sarah might be going to Carolina. But I wholly believe that she's going to choose UConn. I wholly believe she's going to be a UConn Husky. And um, and she's going to flourish. She's going to flourish. And I'm not upset with that. I would love to see Sarah Strong and, and UConn playing South Carolina. I love competition. I love seeing the best play the best. And we will see that. We will see that. Um, it's just amazing to see. It's amazing to to watch. I'm just enthralled. I'm enthralled about all of it. 
I'm enthralled about all of it. I'm enthralled about all of it. So we're about 34 minutes in, and I'm already taking my shots of Tito's. So um, it is, is it Saturday night? It's Saturday night. I don't even know what night it is. Vegas. And if, you know I'm, you know what got me flying to Vegas? Flying to Vegas. So last night, wife and I went to a concert. Went to see Joe. Joe and Tamia. Phenomenal concert. All those cool, cool things. We were close enough to the front where wifey ran up and 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 shook Joe's hand and, and danced and all that stuff. You know, all that stuff. Like, okay. All right, brother. You holding your hand a little too long. Holding, you, holding, holding a little too long. Do not get snatched off that stage. That's all I'm saying. Holding a little too long. Nah, but he was great. He was great. And then he, I like, like when he's a real, real nice cat, real nice cat. So, and she loves Joe, but we caught a flight, an early flight. We kind of like left the concert, caught an early flight here to Vegas. I'm like, yo, I was tired. She was tired. We came back, we came to Vegas, checked in and I took a nap. Like, we, we, we ain't young, like doing that stuff, man. We ain't young like that, hanging out all night and then turn around and catch an early flight. Ain't on like that. Mm -mm. I gotta, we gotta rest. We gotta regenerate. Mm -mm. Can't do that. But the concert was amazing. So amazing. Um, lots of comments, by the way, on a Saturday night. It's, a, it's really cool. Uh, let's go through a couple more and let's say, um, James McFadden and IL Curry Brand, what a great look. So you can come to South Carolina to get the best coaching competition. And when James and Fadden, I couldn't have said it any better. I couldn't say it any better than what you said. You can get the best set up. Let's one more time. Get the best coaching. Don Staley, Lisa Boyer, Jolette Law, Winston Gandy. Sessions, the best coaching, the best competition, because you're going against, you're not only going against the best players in the country, but you're going against the best players in the country in practice before you're actually playing the game. That's why the girls are never intimidated when they've actually playing the game because they're actually playing the best players in the country in practice. In practice, y'all. Crazy. And you also win. Game cost was 36 and 1 last year. Right now we're 32 and 0. Here's a fun fact. Here's a fun fact. I don't know what the record is going to be next year, but I know it's going to start with a, a, a three, three and something. It might be 33 and 0, 30, whatever. It's going to be three and three and something. Not a basketball team can't say that. That you know right now that going into the 2024, 2025 season, Gamecock's going to win at least 30 some games. You can book that. You can already get, you, you can say it. Gamecock's will win 30 some games next year. We're going to lose three or less games next season. That's Gamecock's. We lost, if we don't win the championship this year, we'll lose one basketball game. That'd be two losses in the last two years. And a, a couple of facts, a couple of folks already talking about like, oh, like the, this is the, um, hit me up on Twitter and say, oh, Gamecocks got to win. Gamecocks got to win. Gamecocks got to win this season. No, we don't. We got to win this season. It's not a, if we don't win the chip this year, that's not a down season for South Carolina. I ain't no down season for South Carolina because we ain't supposed to be here. South Carolina was not supposed to be here this season. Nobody was talking about South Carolina going into the season. Nobody. This is supposed to be a down season. This was the only reason we was ranked number six when the season started was because of Don Staley. That was the only reason we was ranked number six. You know for sure that Don Staley was not coaching this basketball team when the season started this uh, uh, this year. That we probably been 20th, 22nd, something like that. Because we had we lost seven players and we lost five starters. Any other basketball team lose all that, they ain't ranked in the top 10. They ain't ranked in the top 10. That was a Don Staley effect. And now... That Don Staley fact on a on a on a, a rebuilding year, got the Gamecocks being a, a three, four, five, six, and six to one favorite to win the chip. Like, bro, mm, this ain't no this this is this is this is gravy right here. Where we at right now? This is gravy. Cause we weren't supposed to be this good. We weren't supposed to be this good. Talent on on the paper. That's it. And people looked at me like, oh damn, crazy. Like I have four four heads. People, when I said, Cam, when I said, when I said, Captain Will says that this team, this was probably like in October, November, December time frame. There was somewhere in there. I probably, I, probably September, October, November, probably around that time. When I said, this team, this current team has the talent, is the most talented basketball team that we've ever had. People looked at me like I was foolish. People looked at me crazy. Like, oh, what is this brother talking about? What is he talking about? No, no. 
this team, and the reason I said that, because I look at recruiting. I mean, you look at recruiting, this is the most talented basketball team that we've ever had. We, it is the most talented basketball team we've ever had. But what came to fruition is the talent match the uh, 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 match the uh, experience because you know the girls gain experience, they gain confidence, they learn how to play play on the um, the court together, have fun together, they enjoy each other. They they is no drama. All these different things on this basketball team. So you got to add another little bonus or a little star with a circle around that. But make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. This team would not be as good as next year. Don't make nobody ain't talk about that. Nobody ain't talk about it. But next year's team will be better than this this team right here. It will be, and they will jump on board. The media folks will jump on board later on. But I'm telling you right here, I said that we would be better. We will be better. So next year's squad will have a a uh, will be the hunter. Because remember the season started, we was a hunter. And now I say we like being a hunter instead of hunted. Well, that changed real quick. That changed real quick. And we came to hunt it. And I've been to hunt it for a long, for a whole lot of weeks. And I like being a hunter. I don't want to be no hunter. I want to be the hunter. You want to come at me? Come on. Come on. And that's what's going on this season. You've been coming at us. 32 teams has tried. Or 32, two, two, two different matches, 32 different basketball games. And, every, and after every game, it's like next. Who got next? Whoever. Now, the sacrificial lamb next week going to be most likely Presbyterian or UT Martin. Sorry for your loss. And we'll talk more about that next week because I can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, me watching Don Staley's final four highlights at five foot six. She was rebounding like a five foot, <laughs> like six foot two player. Oh my gosh. She is rewinding. I, I remember Don Staley was a freaking beast, y'all. Don Staley was a freaking beast. She was so exceptional. Beyond Reality Podcast is UConn. It's 2024 UConn. It's not an elite program. The talent spread throughout the country. Cheers. Cheers. Probably love. Camila needs to work on a, on a 10 to 12 foot, 10 to 12 foot jump shot. Like Adrian Wilson for the aces to work with her. If Camila leaves or stays, they'll be fine. I agree with you completely. Um, Here's the thing. Camilla can hit that 10 to 12. Well, hell, I ain't even got to say that no more. I ain't got to say what, what jump you see. The whole world saw it. It was retweeted. It was re-Instagrammed re, re, uh, it. That's not a word. That is really not a word. It was, it was shared. It was shared over and over again, hitting that three. But she's been hitting that, that uh, mid-range jumper often in practice. She has. She has. And they work with her. A lot. When I say that, I'm talking about Lisa Boyer and such. Work with her a lot, you know. And if she goes to L.A., here's the thing. L.A. got the second and fourth pick. If there's a situation, and, I don't, and you know, I know a lot of folks in here watch WNBA. And when, when, when the WNBA season starts, I'm going to be doing a, a, a focus on Gamecocks in the WNBA. I won't be covering the WNBA. Don't get it twisted. I'll be covering the Gamecocks who play. In the WNBA, so every time, every day, somebody in the game, somebody in WNBA has a game cock. We everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So, but this, this thing right here, if you haven't been watching the Sparks, the Sparks got Zaya Cook, okay, got Zaya Cook. And it was a time when Destin Henderson, I was like, oh god, that's gonna be awesome, right? So they got the second pick and they got the fourth pick in the upcoming draft. So the acquiring minds think that uh, Cameron Brink gonna be the second pick. I don't. Disagree with that. I think Cameron Bring is an amazing player. But a fourth pick. Sparks are projected to get Camila Cardoza. There's a situation where they got Brink and Camila Cardoza in this draft. Two out of the four players, six foot four, six foot seven. Both of them are defensive stalwarts, along with Zy Cook from last year. Come on now. Sign me up. Sign me up. Sign me up. Junior, are these women going to dunk and be more exciting for a change? Maybe lower the goal or something. Brother. I'm not sure what what uh, uh, <laughs> game you're watching. I'm not sure what you're saying, but I think that you uh, <laughs> I think that you uh, maybe you're watching the wrong sport. Maybe you're watching the wrong sport, Junior. And I don't know. I don't know you, brother. I don't know you. But for that statement, are these women going to dunk and be more exciting for a change? So it tells me that the only thing that excites you is dunking a basketball. If that's the thing, by all means. Watch the NBA, watch, you know, men's college basketball. That's the only thing that actually excites you when 
in, in a basketball uh, sport. Because, Junior, I don't know how tall you are, but there were a lot of basketball games when I played, because I'm about six foot. There's a lot of basketball games where I played that there was no dunking involved. I'm just saying, no dunking involved. And for these ladies, have been exceptional. Has been exceptional to watch. Maybe just see a game here or there. Maybe see it on sports and not sure. Not sure. But the the women's game, and maybe I'm biased. But hell I, I am biased because I'm covering game cops, women. Game cop went. My wife busts out the bathroom looking like a doggone star. Looking like like ooh, star. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Junior, I got I got digress. I digress. We don't need nothing about no lowering no uh no goal, no no crap like that, brother. This is not the game, man. This ain't the game. This is this is very talented basketball player. So I don't know if you're a fan of women's basketball. Apparently not for you to make a statement like that. So as we move on, Mocha Latte, I know she is two years, but I hope we pick up. Oh, okay. All right. Mocha Latte, I like that comment. I like that comment. James is playing cat basketball about matchups. You're so true. You're so true. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for being a member. Um, Big BDS 222. Kentucky Center is in the portal. Yep, she is in the portal. She averaged a double double. I ain't saying she great. I ain't saying that whatsoever. I'm not saying she great. I ain't saying that she averaged a double double on our basketball team. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I ain't saying that whatsoever because I think our bigs are better. What I'm saying is she'll fill a role. She'll fill a role on our team if we was to get her. Reggie Singer team, we win with or without Sarah. Facts. Mike Jean, thank you, my guy. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Um, and um, shots for selection Sunday. Oh, it's gonna be on, brother. It's gonna be on tomorrow. Can't wait. Now it's not no, no uh, drama. You know, it's got it's kind of hard for South Carolina to create drama in, in terms of selection Sunday because we know we're gonna be number one seed. It doesn't matter of who's gonna be that number two. In my in my opinion, I'm what I'm looking at is we the number one overall seed. Which means we should have the easiest path to the championship. We should. That's the that is the that is the uh, reward for being the top overall seed. You got a whole lot of teams early in the early in the season who play these weak schedules. You reward greatness and in seeding and in the and in, in the net rankings and. RPI and all those cool things. You know what it was not being brought up right now? Can we talk about, you know, here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. This is why I try, I've been trying to school everybody this season about AP poll and the co and coaches poll. AP poll and the coaches poll is strictly for ratings. It is strictly for ratings. And when I say that, because when you see a team, when you when you pulling up the guide or you looking on on your uh, your app, your ESPN app, your sport uh, CBS Sports app, or Fox Sports, whatever the the case may be. However, you get your information. You see, oh man, South Carolina number one. They taking on number four UConn. But I, I got to check out this game, right? Got to check out this game. But it doesn't take into account that maybe UConn are not as good as they were. Uh, as people say they are. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you see that number four ranking, like this is gonna be a bomb game. What you are not seeing at all when in Selection Sunday. AP poll mean absolutely nothing. What you're going to hear a whole lot about tomorrow. Oh, this team had seven quad one victories. This team had eight quad two victories. And what that basically mean is, that's why during the course of the season, I always talked about um, Carolina is 8-0, 10-0, 12-0 against teams in the top 50, teams in the top 60. Because those basically are quad one victories. So you're supposed to get credit for playing a tough schedule. You're supposed to get credit. You play a tough schedule, you get ranked high because of the schedule that you play. That's how it's supposed to be. So Carolina should be or should have the easiest path to victory to cutting down those nets. So I'm going to be more concerned about who's number two, who's number three in our region. You know, and we'll be playing, you know, obviously we're playing in Columbia the first two rounds and we're playing Albany after that. 
But that those are things I am. But this whole notion of this AP poll and that is all rank. That, those are all for ratings, bro. Those are all for ratings. You will hear nothing, absolutely nothing about AP poll or, or coaches poll tomorrow. Nothing. You hear nothing about it because it means absolutely nothing. The selection com committee don't give a damn about no AP poll. You don't mean nothing. You don't mean nothing. You got a team like uh, towards the end of the season, Fairfield. Fairfield uh, um, lost a, one or two basketball games, whatever, and they said, and they made this old tweet or something to ESPN or to whatever, uh, saying we need to be ranked. Well, you don't need to be ranked. You don't need to be ranked. Nobody don't need to be ranked. Not an AP poll. You know, because I mean, uh, for kids, man, like, ah, we ranked twenty fifth. We ranked twenty fourth. That being, yeah, okay. What you need to do, and this goes for all the teams, play an attractive schedule. And when you play an attractive schedule, win, lose, or draw. Win, lose, or draw. Because you can be, because what I don't want to hear is teams complain, I'm 28 and three. I'm 30 when, and 30 and two or whatever. And then your strength of schedule is about 291. Don't, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Because you got teams like that, this, that's going to be pissed off. But like, I should have made the tournament. I should have made the tournament. And then you're going to hear this thing, oh, because then the qualification, you know, the, you win your conference, you should be in the tournament, all this, that, and the third. I'll talk about it on another day. Because I ain't too keen on that either. I ain't too keen on that. Because your conference sucked. And just because you win a sucky conference, that means that you should be in the tournament and get rewarded for that. I don't reward bad behavior. I reward the teams who are the best. And I want to see the best play. What I don't want to see is sacrificial lamb. Uh, let's say we play Presbyterian, we are beating by 70 points because they win the conference. They play the South Carolina, they win the tournament. Eh, I want to see that. I want to see that. And I'm folks going to say some stuff like, yo, okay, well, now you're wrong. Well, I may be wrong, but I want to see the best play the best. And the best playing the best means that a, a, a bigger, a team like a SEC or a Pac-12 who's going away now um, have 10 teams in the, in the tournament. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because you line up those 10 teams in the tournament playing some of these, you know, weaker, smaller conferences, they would blow them out. So I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I want to see the best play the best. And I, it's cool with these small schools or these teams that didn't play nobody during the season. They uh, You see them cheering, hey, 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 in the tournament, hey, hey, hey. Doing all that stuff, right? Dancing, 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 dancing. And then when the tournament actually starts, and it's reality, and them kids, you see them kids looking like them right here? Could have gotten drugged by 60 points on national TV. But in the tournament, send those kids to a uh, in 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 IT and can play against the level of competition. Yeah, I, you know it's gonna be upsets from here to there, time to time, because upsets happen. I got it. But you know, just like I know, look at me in my eyes right now. There ain't no chance that any team playing South Carolina in the first round has any any chance, even if I suit up. Of, of hanging with South Carolina. There's no chance. Mm -mm. No chance. Uh, Steve Storm Augustus, how you feel about Poole? Oh, how do I feel about Poole? I feel she ain't going to come to South Carolina. I mean, let me begin with that. Let me begin that. You know, Poole will not be at South Carolina. Hell no. That ain't happening. I think she'll find her path because she's a good basketball player. But it won't be a good South, movie, South Carolina. So, um... Captain Mari Berry may leave. Coach of Clemson got fired. Ooh. I don't, you know what? Jamel Jenkins, this, this is the thing about recruiting too. It was, uh... <laughs> this is the thing. This is the thing with recruiting. Because when Barry, who I loved as a basketball player, I'm I'm just I'm just keeping it real. I wanted her to be a gamecock. I did. But she chose to go to Clemson because she wanted to start her own story. She wanted to start her own story. And the Clemson coach was um, recruiting like crazy and all those things like that. But what happened, what happened was um, Clemson didn't win. Clemson didn't win. So at the end of the day, you have to win. You have to win. And Amanda Butler was there for six years. 
Six years. You know, eight, what is this? 81 and 106. Six years and two winning seasons. You, 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 you're going to leave. You're going to leave. Mediocrity can only last for so long. So Barry said some things, you know, when she chose Clemson and, 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 and um, I don't think Barry will be a, a, a game cop. I don't think she answered. I don't think if she enters the transfer portal, cause she is not into the transfer portal, but I expect her to enter the transfer portal. Cause you don't, cause she basically chose Clemson because of the coach. She ain't choose Clemson for the for their program. Clemson ain't never won nothing. Come on, let's keep it real. Clemson ain't never won nothing. They ain't gonna never win nothing. No women's college basketball. Let's keep it real on that one. But she chose because of the coach. So I expect her to go somewhere else. Would it be some talks? Would it be some calls about Barry, you know, possibly going to the game? Uh, 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 if she enters the transfer portal, would it be some conversations about her possibly going to South Carolina? I don't know. I don't know. It, it probably will. It probably will. But I wish her well. I wish her well. I wish her well. She's a really good player, and I really, I really like her game. I really like her game. I just think she just chose, and just in my opinion, you know, um, she wanted to start something new. She wanted to be the catalyst for that basketball team, and and it just did not happen at Clemson whatsoever. It just didn't happen. Um, she's rewinding. Someone on Reddit said that is Don. Is Don's less talented team said this is Don's less talented team in a while, but when she's been able to do is wonders with the squad. How do you all check who's in the port? Oh, she is rewind. I don't know what the hell Reddit talking about, but apparently they don't watch uh recruiting. They don't they 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 just this on the layer, this on the top layer, but you gotta dig down deep and, and, and check it out. Okay, so whoever said that this is a less talented team that Don Staley's had in a while, they is first of all, it's a lie. It's a lie. Most inexperienced team that Don Staley's ever had. Most inexperienced team. But definitely, definitely the most talented basketball team that Don Staley's ever had. Definitely. Definitely. If you just go by recruiting numbers, just go by recruiting. Raven Johnson, no, number two recruiting in the 20 class of 2021. Okay. You got you got a uh, uh, T in the Pow Pow. Top 12, top 13 recruiting her recruiting class. You got Breezy Hall, top 14 recruiting her recruiting class. You know, then we got oh, Chloe Kiss, 17th ranked in the 20th class, 2023. Camila Cardoso is a top five recruit in the class of 2020. Should I go on? Yes, I will. Malaysia Fullwiler, 13th ranked recruit in the class of 2023. Tessa Johnson, uh, 25th ranked recruit in the class of 2023. Should I keep on going? Yes, I will. Sanaya Fagan, another McDonald's All-America, fourth ranked in her recruiting class. Those are our top eight players. Top eight. Okay, I ain't even talking about Ashlyn Watkins, who was 12th ranked in her recruiting class. This is the most talented basketball team in terms of talent on paper that we've ever had. So whoever said it on Reddit, mm, you're wrong. Um, who's in the portal? Right now, we ain't got nobody in the portal. We ain't got nobody in the portal. And you got some players in there that, that I got a little, I don't, I, like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about portal, you know, as more players come out. We'll talk more about that, especially when I get back to the crib. TD. Cap, it made no sense for Strong to pick South Carolina. We got Edwards, none. Well, TD, this is the way I think about it. Cyrus is going to play three. George plays four. And let's just start with it. They, they play two separate positions. Now, in high school, when both of them are the tallest player on the court, they are going to play center or wherever the hell they, they want to play. Let's just keep it real. But if you have a scenario, and, and, and this is the thing too, Sarah and George are friends. They'll be playing together later, um, and they'll be on the same team at McDonald's All-American game and so forth. But you know she's she's with who she she's gonna be with who she wants to be, you know. Nolan, but thank you for the comment, TD. You always give me good comments, Nolan. Uh, all these young ballers are so committed to their academics, impressive and awesome. You're so right. You're so right. Thank you for the member. Thank you for the love. We will do a show on Monday. We'll do a show recapping. What was said in the bracketology? We'll talk all about that path for the Gamecocks to get to the championship. It is NCAA tournament time. It is now. It's time to get lit. It's time to get crunk. This is what we've been waiting for, and I'm going to be with you every 
step of the way. This includes another episode of Game Guys Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man. Captain Will, make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, you can rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go.